stay here. I risk everything. I leave everything behind. Shut up. Oh, no, so I never knew fear could be a place from which we draw comfort and where we feel most at home. This is our garden and she's my daughter. I come from a village that lies at the foot of a gorge. Terrible and hunting beauty. The energy there is so loaded that I just started to sing. I never knew such a sight could also be the face of pain. It is never <laughs> I wonder if all war photographers are so interested in opera, especially in female parts. Now he's here with you, right? Yes, it but the Rasma Aprum Martin San Hinta. My general is not a soldier. This is my home. Now I can be only a soldier. What was your father doing? He was a photographer, just like you, and a very talented one. We were both prisoners of our past, hunted by the same face. And what made you become a war journalist? I saw his talent, and uh, we thought about sending him to cover his first armed conflict in a remote communist country. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Stop this! Because you're a liar! You are a thief! I spew! <laughs> In the calmness of that beauty, we find our serenity. Worthy of the gate to heaven. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Hi, my name is Menina Putri Wismurti. I'm the festival co-director of Europe On Screen 2021. It is really nice to meet you all, the audience of Europe On Screen 2021. And today we will have the opportunity to talk with uh, some of the people who are already in, uh, involved in this film because Gate to Heaven is an Armenian film that uh, it has a lot of countries involved in co-production by uh, actually eight countries. So um, today we will talk with uh, the director himself, Mr. Hivan, and then Hivan Afestian, and then also, I hope I pronounce your name correctly, Yivan Afetishan. Is that correct? 
Yeah. Jivan, 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 Jivan Avet T-shirt. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, attending. And then also uh, Miss Adrina Mirzayan. And uh, at the moment, yes. And you are the uh, from the co-production uh, from uh, United States, right? In America. Right. Yes. Right. Thank you so much for joining. Especially right now, probably like very late at night. Hi, Cassidy. <laughs> Yes, and also Mr. Kastitis Drasdauskas. I hope I pronounce mm. it well. You pronounce it very well. Okay. Great. Pleasure <laughs> to meet you. you. <laughs> Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Kastitis. And Mr. Kastitis is actually also co-producer uh, co from Lithuania for Gate to Heaven for this movie. So it's, it's, it's a, such an honor. I think this is also the very first time that uh, our film talk has is, is been very special to be uh to be joined by all of you from all other the world. So from Armenia, from US, from Lithuania, this is, this is very incredible. And I think this is gonna only happen during the COVID time. So yes, but before we start, uh, just I would just like to explain the role of the, the session today, just for everyone to know that uh, the session will be conducted in English. So, and, but if you, if the audience wanted to ask in uh, Bahasa or in other language, you can, uh, actually type your question at the Q&A button below. And then please kindly keep in mind that this webinar session, this, the film talk is being recorded and broadcasted live on uh, Europe on screen YouTube at the moment. And all participants are muted in order to enable the speakers to speak without interruption. So uh, in the next uh, 30 minutes, we will actually talk about Gate to Heaven, the film that has just started its screening time yesterday via online edition in Europe on screen 2021. So to open the session, uh, I would like to know what uh, what were the first inspiration to make this film and to involve so many country in the production. Maybe uh, we can start with uh, Yifan and then go to Kestutis and Adrine at the end. So please. Yeah. Okay, so he has to say this in Armenian and I'll go ahead and uh, translate. Okay. Yes, please. So, I have a inspiration in each in travel career because they were a screen must archives. This is my time. I said, 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 I Yes, Uzun, but my impact to Nashari, if you make a Okay. Um, so, what has inspired him, obviously, the film is about Artsakh. He's from Artsakh himself. He lives there, his family lives there. He creates in Artsakh um, as much as he goes back and forth between Yerevan and Artsakh, but he, he's from there. And he feels the need and the inspiration to tell about his home place. So that's where he gets his inspiration from. Uh, so it's very personal. Very, very personal. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, obviously Gate to Heaven is his third feature film. So every film that he's made, it's really about um, real stories um, that he's heard or witnessed. He collects those stories and creates his own story for the film. Okay. And then also for all uh, Kastutis? Well, I, uh, it's, it's the third film that I'm doing with Jivan. So it's a long-term cooperation and uh, I joined him several years ago on his first feature so it was only natural that we developed the film together and I, I like the story very much I try to give my input um, I try to 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 give a little bit of like Western European perspective to it because Jovan comes from his own background and like you said it was a very personal story but I think uh, it's a story that can resonate across countries because problematic is very universal regardless yes. of where it takes place so 
so yes, and uh, I'm just happy that we managed to build this team together. And Jivan is also a very uh, active and uh, friendly person. So so he put together this massive team from, from all those different countries. I, I don't know how he manages to even communicate with so many different territories, you know. We're used to making films in one room. You sit down, you have a conversation, and and in this case, it wasn't so. You know, and we 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 were shooting across two countries, then doing post production across another three countries. So you know, <laughs> it was a journey. Yes, indeed. And Adrine, how how, how did you get involved? Oh um, well, obviously, I'm Armenian myself. I live here in Los Angeles, so I'm uh, essentially a diaspora and Armenian. So my inspiration comes from the fact that this is uh, plays a huge part in our history and our culture, who we are as people. So that's you know, I've been again same as Castadis. Uh, I met Jivan about seven years ago with their first feature film, and it's been a journey, and it's it's all come together, and it's been an, an amazing ride. <laughs> that's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I also understand that uh, Jivan have a background at the, at the documentaries and also short. That's why some of the scene in the film has been using those approach and method where where uh, Robert, the, the photographer guy, tried to be in the, in the camera, follow him. And that's really seemed for us, it, it looks like a kind of documentary approach. Uh, is that also something that influenced the film and also, also part of uh, Jivan's ex personal experience? Jivan, as we at Masa, we featured a camera on the official documentary, Bon Uni. ինչպես <gülüyor> 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 Um, so his style and his uh, the way he approaches his um, storyline is essentially every person has a real story. This is someone who has had the story. It's a personal story. And what he does is he likes to collect these stories and create a new story. And that's basically the photojournalist uh, Richard Samuel uh, Robert Stonewall himself um, as a photojournalist. That in itself has um, a, a real story and a background to it as well. We have a many news that change for film or part of them. By the way, it's inspiration and red line most ways because it arrives part of the Yes, Iraqan photography part of the and it's several years. Part of the 30 article image. Yeah. So in regards to the photojournalist, where he um, was able to get the idea from was he actually read about him in the newspaper. Um, so again, back to the, of it being a real story, that's how he, his imagination basically um, took what he's read. So the opera singer is actually, again, another story that he personally knows that opera singer who really did um, lose her, she really did lose her dad. So he took that story and, and obviously integrated with Richard Samuel's story, the war photojournalist and created uh, the storyline of the film. Right. So Robert and Sophia was actually based on a real life story. Real life story, correct. Wow. Okay. And uh, we, should, Kestin... we should, yeah, we should probably mention that uh, recently there was another outbreak of of fighting in Artsakh, and and the Jivan actually spent the whole time there documenting what was going on there. So he himself is a war journalist. You can say so. Yes. I mean, I I think we can actually see that at the gate to heaven. This is what I, I'm. I'm I want to ask actually because it seems like every uh, scene has been calculated like when the bomb and the Sophia almost get the lamb falling and the war situation is very real and 
I understand that uh, the war itself uh, has been still happening at this moment in, in the country itself. And um, I was just wondering before that Castutis mentioned that uh, he, you already worked with uh, Jifan for many films, and then you were always <laughs> uh, you 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 you're amazed how Jifan managed to bring everybody to make this film. So <laughs> so I was just wondering uh, what 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 did he do <laughs> to make to ensure you to convince you to join to make this film, especially with the long time experience that you guys have. Well, I. Uh... I see that there is a question um, already in the Q&A box, so I will probably <laughs> answer both questions in a way. Um, we met with Jivan in uh, Cannes Film Festival. And, uh, you know, in Cannes Film Festival, you, you have a lot of business meetings, but then you have kind of informal gatherings, parties, where you just meet people. And, and I met Jivan. He was just sitting there by himself. And I... Uh, kind of felt that he was Armenian, but anyway, I approached him and just asked him a couple of questions. And then, uh, you know, we, we got into conversation and he started telling me about his first film, you know, and uh, I liked the story so much. Uh, he, he was about to start shooting it. So I had very little opportunity to, to do something for that film, but I liked the story a lot. And uh, I said, well, why don't we do post-production for it? Because, you know, they, they're struggling very much in Armenia. Like financing is very, very difficult to find. Uh, the state financing is very, very small. So the only way to finance films like that is like really work with a lot, a lot of people. Uh, most of the films of Jivan are crowd financed as well. So, so they, they raise money through like web platforms and so on. And then uh, people like me join with anything they can do, you know, because some, somebody can do video post-production, other people can do music, another person can do sound post. It's kind of an investment, but, you know, you don't necessarily have to have cash for that. So, yeah. so, so, you know, this way we, we managed to, to make it happen. You know? and, and I think that uh, a lot of people who watch the film, uh, they're surprised when they hear the budget numbers for it because it's just so much bigger. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. It also. basically stretches the dollar. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, okay. Well, it is good to know that in Armenia and also other places in the world, the film production still be done in a similar way in Indonesia. Like you brought everybody who would like to contribute that your friends, your family to join and to put some money and to make it happen. That's, that is sort of something that we do in Indonesian film industry. Yeah. So yes, as, as Kastuti said, we have already uh, questions in our uh, Q&A box from our audience. I'm going to read it out. Uh, so also our YouTube uh, viewers also can hear it. And oh, this one is in Bahasa, in Indonesian language. So uh, I would I would translate them to you. So so many movie about the war right now uh, has more focus on the conflict or the personal uh, or the character's personal problem, which mostly uh, an ordinary person compared to the story of the war itself. For example, like uh, Seven Private Ryan. But the way I see it, Gate of Heaven, the Gate to Heaven actually, um, is one of those films. Uh, is there any, uh, is there, or is it possible that the film uh, can be called as an anti-war film? Is this how you want to deliver it as an anti-war film? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
I want to make sure that I understood the question that you, you were asking in general about the the war, correct? If the what is yeah. this? Uh, yeah. So um, basically, um, Jivan's thought process about his films is really to promote peace, um, and that's when when you I think you said anti-war, and that's exactly what he's trying to promote is peace. Um, is to bring attention to the conflict itself because this conflict is not just a conflict that has only happened once. It's obviously, this is a, a conflict that has happened over a hundred years ago and it happened 30 years ago, 2016, and now this past September. So that's what he's trying to do with his films is to bring attention and awareness about the conflict and as well as peace because obviously he wants peace. He, he no longer wants to see war in his homeland. So, yes. or I should say in our homeland. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Castutis, you would you like to add something? Yes, well, I, I would probably add that it's not only about peace, it's also about human choices, of course, and, and uh, you know, conscious decisions and, and uh, where you stand in in in, in yeah. um, complicated circumstances but uh, essentially yes I, I would just repeat that uh, the film is really peaceful and all of Jivan's films are peaceful you know like uh, it's, it's <laughs> you can see them as continuation of this peaceful um, vision as so, uh, uh, when I saw the movie Get to Heaven itself, it's also addressed the issue of how you cope with something that you've done in the past and then also how you to let go and to basically make a peace again also with yourself about what have you done. Was it also part of the stories and that you want that you would like to deliver? Yes, very much so. I, I you know, I can say that uh... This, this is probably one of the key themes in the film that resonates across any uh, country, across any people. So, yeah. yes. Sorry, Adrina, go ahead. No, no, that's exactly what it is. It's basically coming into peace with yourself and the decisions that you have made, right? Because every mm -hmm. person can make a decision and not be happy with the decision they made. So you eventually have to come in terms with it and find your inner peace once you do accept your um, mistakes and your faults. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Also, we have another uh, questions from the audience. Um, from Bambang Junaidi. Uh, hello, everybody. I enjoyed watching the film Gate to Heaven. It is my first time watching a film from Armenia as we don't often see Armenian film here in Indonesia that is also very true because here usually the cinema are crowded with only uh, American films so why are not there a lot of films from Armenia how is this how is it usually the funding process to get a film made in Armenia um, I, I would say there's a, a, a little bit of different factors that play a role of why it's so hard to make films in Armenia. First of all, I think we have to remember that Armenia was um, part of the Soviet Union. So after the dissolution of this, um, the Soviet Union in 1990s, um, the first thing that happened, even though Europeans celebrated the fall of communism, it actually had the exact opposite effect in Armenia and Artsakh because that's when the conflict started. So the borders of Armenia have been close to the east and the west side. So it makes it very difficult. Um, so the concentration of the country has been where we need to rebuild the country because we went through a four year war. And at the same time, we had a devastating earthquake um, that over 25,000 people uh, lives were lost. So the diaspora really concentrated on rebuilding the country. So unfortunately, film was not a priority as much as so many other things and the infrastructure of our families that were, you know, um, were left homeless and so forth. So 
it's only in the last few years that you do see a little bit of funding from the state, but unfortunately, it's not a priority, especially now, even after this conflict. It's, um, there are so much more challenges within the country that unfortunately, film is not a priority. Mm -hmm. But we're we're all we're beating against the odds. Jivan is that's for sure. <laughs> I would probably add to it that um, there are there is a small number of films made in the country, very small. Yeah, and the right. country and the country itself is very small. There are only like what three million people in Armenia. Mm -hmm. So exactly. Ar 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 Armenians Armenians are you know one of these. Uh, few nations that they have more people outside of their country than inside their home country you know um, so that said the, there are only a few films per year made and and most of them are targeting domestic audience so these films don't travel you know and Jivan is is one of the few people who are doing international stories for international audiences so unfortunately there is not a big supply of Armenian films, <laughs> but we are happy that we can bring this to you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and then also the, 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 we I are happy also, to watch it. <laughs> yes, and I, I must say that uh, uh, we we just had an international premiere of the film in Los Angeles, like literally a week ago. You know, so so oh, well, this is freshly out. <laughs> So right now it's being screened at, at, at the cinema in Los Angeles. No, we had a private premiere on Friday evening. It was um, extremely well received by many. Um, uh -huh. We're looking to see, you know, what our next step is because we want to have a theatrical release here. Um, mm -hmm. It made a lot of noise within the com not only the community, outside of the community as well. So we're looking to see um, hopefully, if COVID kind of subsides, then you know we have we'll have a better chance for the theatrical release. Yes, that's that sounds so good. I, I hope that also. I wish you the best of luck for that too. Yeah. I, I was just wondering now, uh, the film uh, has won also uh, the best music for a film and television soundtrack. So how does uh, how did the process go with the with the choosing of the scoring and the soundtrack? Do you like me to answer that, Cassidy? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cassidy, sorry, that's what I was going to say. Okay. Just that we're all right. We can learn from each other. Yeah. Um, Cassidy, Javon said you would probably answer this a lot better, but I, I'm not. I let me just give the brief introduction of a year before our production. Michaela Josia actually reached out to us uh, via Facebook Messenger that he had to come across our, um, you know, our project and that he was very much interested in joining uh, yeah, during our crowdfunding. Um, that's how he found us. And so we kept our, we kept in touch. I actually wrote him back that I was excited to have, you know, someone like him interested in our project. And, you know, when the time came, Jivan's like, I really like this guy and I really want to, <laughs> work with them so that's how it all started and then the rest is history <laughs> and then Jivan and Kastidis traveled together to Rome to visit Michele to obviously um, finish off the sound Right. So, so music. Music. Uh, also. He, he basically he basically made me pay for additional mixing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the music was so good that I said, well, yeah, we have to do it properly. So yeah. 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 That's good. I mean, it, it's been rewarded at the Global Music Awards. So <laughs> that's it. Why? <laughs> Actually, he won an award, and he also ended up as a finalist on the other. And they were both LA-based uh, awards. Yeah. So he also uh, he was also nominated for another award. Wow, that's congratulations, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, and also I was uh, I heard that also the film has been uh, screened uh, in the cinema in your country and probably also in another in all the other countries that helped to co-produce as well. How was the response in in Armenia during the screening? 
the theatrical release. Yeah. Um, so the beauty about Jivan's films is um, he does have a following in Armenia, so they're always looking forward to his films to come to the cinemas. Um, we had a two month uh, run in the cinema uh, from October 17 to December 17. So, um, but again, the cinema industry is, is again small. I think the whole um, capital, sure, cinema. there's only four cinemas in the country. I four. Think, yeah, yeah, four. I'm not, I'm not I mean, I'm most not of it is, is in Yerevan, the capital city. They're very, very mm. tiny theaters, um, you know outside of Yerevan, which is very interesting because Armenia has such a rich culture and history um, that, you know, prior to the communism era, we had films or we had, um, we had very good films prior to um, the Soviet Union. So it's interesting how we ourselves are seeing how this industry is kind of evolving itself because we've always been very proud of the history and the culture and, and the artistic dramatic um, theaters that we've had in Armenia. So I'm, we're very, I'm very curious to see how the next 10 years will unfold because the, the good thing is you know, Jivan has his following here in LA, across the globe. They're always waiting for him for his new creations. Also, what makes me want to jump to them to be caught? No, he is a man film. I'm trying to tell you, he has a test of passion. I'm trying to get to my passion and film. So, um, after LA, we have um, quite a number of screenings in North America and Canada as well. So. The film is traveling around here. Um, next stop is going to be in Detroit, Michigan, and then New oh. Jersey, New York, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Boston. Boston, Montreal, and Toronto. So he travels, his, he, and the films travel with him, essentially, um, <laughs> because, you know, the communities across the globe are waiting to see this film. It's, it's been how long? Since 2018, since we've created the film. So, um and you know, yes, we, yeah. we are one of the films that actually were hit with COVID, you know, so yeah, that's why it's our original <laughs> premiere was supposed to be last year, uh, March of 2020, three days before our premiere, we had the lockdown. So, unfortunately, we were expecting 800 people to that premiere, mm. so yeah, so it has not yet been screened, uh, so widely due to the. COVID and then uh, and probably it hasn't also been screened in Lithuania. Yes, but we're still waiting for, for the, the good opportunity, you know, because we we had theaters closed for like almost a year and a half. Now they're reopening, but people are still a bit cautious about going so, uh, to theaters. So, so we're just waiting a little bit, hopefully, you know, kind of come spring, that's when we release them at home. Yes. Yeah. And there are also any plan to probably uh, put it on the uh, like a platform so that people can watch it yes yes but normally you know we, we would try to exploit film theatrically before we put it online mm -hmm. uh, nonetheless i mean you know if, if if a good offer comes of course we will consider that too okay, yeah. okay. so we have also other questions uh it's the same. Uh, so Gaston was asking, how is actually your or your personal opinion on the journalist of war? Because here, because uh, get to he felt that get to heaven is questioning about how to become a war journalist. While usually they are uh, individualists and they are working by themselves, but but here in the movie sometimes uh, the war journalist uh, Robert sometimes have a problem due to that so what is your uh, so he was asking what is your own opinion about the word journalist 
So as um, we talked, we mentioned earlier, um, Jivan was part of the conflict this time. He was there for 38 days and he he accompanied a lot of the war journalists who came from Europe and other places to cover the war. Um, so his perspective is that he saw some really good war journalists, but he also helped some of them to cover the war. But at the same time, when he later saw the report, the reporting, it wasn't what they had initially had recorded or taken photos of. So the reporting came out differently from what he would have thought the, mm. the reality would have been. Um, so he was very much disappointed at that. Yes, but it's a special one of our thoughts was to journalist to put it in German, Corona is copies, Pohanti, audience in Vietnam, any short column, much should one of the line. Yeah. So obviously the uh, war photojournalist plays a major role of getting the, uh, you know, the correct information out. There's yes. so much there is in media that unfortunately is not the correct information. Um, yes. So that's where he was very much disappointed because he really thought that these war um, photojournalists would have um, shared the truth rather than when he actually saw the reporting, it wasn't what it was. So he was very disappointed with that. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, one could probably differentiate between the people who are working for media, mm. which means the media have certain narrative, which those journalists just illustrate, help illustrate. And then there are people who are like true researchers who are going there for what they believe in what they want to portray the go there for reality so i think in our case this uh, exhibition that we have in the film portrays mm -hmm. the people who are actually you know they bring out what they see yeah. like the realities without without agenda i, I would put it that way Yes, I think they are. Yeah, I can understand uh, how uh, Jipan felt about the disappointment because, well, I, I had that kind of experience <clears throat> become a kind of fixer for other for the journalists, for for the journalists. What well, uh, then? Apparently, it didn't deliver as what they earlier mentioned or explained. So you felt like you're being fooled. But I can totally understand about that. But I also agree with what Castuti said that there are all people like uh, who would really want to deliver the message what they really see in the war itself that's why you uh there's a statement about the exhibition so also there's also one more question uh from the audience uh, he was asking what uh, what are the filmmakers that influenced uh jifan's work <laughs> who, who are the filmmakers yes i mean like yeah. Because, yeah, each film maker never covers because the one on the Yes, 
Mesirim, filmi de Udran'ı zaten kızlar konum ve bu kişi çıkmıyor. Yeah. He says he likes to watch films sometimes over and over again just to see what style the director uses in the films. So he doesn't necessarily want to talk about one film director because he likes to um, venture out and see what, uh, how others bring their talent into their films. Um, mm. Love and Satisfaction in film, I feel. He 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 believes that he's a good um, audience himself. He's a good viewer, so he takes it all in and and tries to learn one thing here and there because he likes to learn. Um, he thinks that you have to constantly learn to be able to produce quality. Um, yes, you know, Qatar, they so many special actors. We have to think about the entire. Yeah. yeah, for him, it's really also very interesting to read about the biography of the directors, how they've lived their lives, um, where did they come from, how did they <laughs> succeed, um, what did they believe in, their vision, their goal, their mission, and he likes to read about that and just to see um, what what they have to offer. Yeah. He says, yeah, there are a few filmmakers that I really respect and like, but he goes, I, I rather not mention those. <laughs> Just, you know, this is his style. <laughs> yeah, it's understandable. <laughs> yeah. So yes, as it, before we close the, the session for today, uh, can you probably share us, uh, you earlier mentioned about uh, your next project, the documentary that uh, Yifan has been uh, doing at this moment. And probably we could also bring it here to Indonesia someday. Sure. Kastidis, is that something you want to talk about? Well, I mean, we are we are working on several projects. They're all in different stages. Uh, you know, we're working on scripts and so on. So, um, um, yes, I think that uh, hopefully we will be able to bring something to Indonesia too. It's just that uh, things are not going very fast in the film industry, especially nowadays. So I cannot say yes. when exactly we will be able to come out with a new film, but uh, we've already started the crowdfunding campaign for the film called Revival. And the film will be about essentially finding one's roots. We will have characters of different nations in different countries in different situations. Um, so we are putting financing together for that now, and God willing, within a couple of years, it will be out. Yeah. <laughs> Revival, it's actually what we're doing with Revival is because uh, Jivan spent 38 days in Artsakh, we'll be integrating some of the findings that he has. Um, he's documented, uh, you know, the war crimes that were committed. So he's going to be taking here um, some information from that and integrate it into the film. So it's it's going to be really, I really um, have very, I won't say high hopes, but I definitely think that Revival is, is going to be a, a really beautiful film. It's just, it's coming together. The energy about the film is, is you know, very enticing, so. Yeah. Yeah. So Jivan says 
it's it's not because it's my film that I tell you it's a beautiful film because it is a beautiful film and it has um it's a multi-layered film and the team has worked on this uh, on the script for the last three years and it's not just our script writer our co-script writer we've also had consultants on the subject because there is a portion of artificial intelligence that's going to be involved in the film so um, we've had some specialists, some people that are really good in this arena, uh, who have given us a lot of information that has definitely taken the, uh, the project to another level. So our, our goal is to obviously go into production next year, fall of 2022. Um, so hopefully we'll get to see the film. Not the... 2023. Oh, Artificial Intelligence Mass of Film, a Lavagun or Shari Lavagun Company, its maker, a Christ Kamushan Company, a Masna Kita, you shall say science fiction, but Pavagan had a curious eye, a Raja Haki Confinal in a loop or artificial intelligence, a machina, science fiction in motor, a change beside. Okay, so yes, I already mentioned um, that the film will have an element of artificial intelligence, and we actually have someone here from the United States, a very well known um, person in the field of AI who's agreed to also give us a little bit of pointers. And for us, we're excited about it because this is the first Armenian film that will also have the AI component. Um, so, oh. and the AI, yeah, there's a futuristic um, methodology to the AI that comes and connects the human life together, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I'm, well, I'm looking forward. I, I, you already had me with the with the theme of finding its roots because that's actually what we have been experiencing, especially when we got locked down everywhere in the whole world. And then what we can do right now is reconnect it to our roots. So I wish you the best of luck for the films. And yeah, the, the AI is also like interesting. It's going to be first Armenian film with ha you has this component in the film. So this is going to be something. And I also. Gonna ask Cassidy's is Cassidy's Lithuania's first film with AI or or no? <laughs> no, no, we have we have had several. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so if, if there's anything that we can do, uh, I mean, like if you have another crowdfunding and, and that we can help actually, our festival can help to spread the word, let us know because your film has also been supported and brought by the Armenian embassy in Indonesia. Uh, oh. Yes, so they are also very supporting, uh, and we are happy to have them to join the, the our festival Europe on screen because they are very good good supporter. And Miss Lilith Sarf uh has actually acted in uh, the film talk here. So we are uh, let us know if we can help with with your film, and uh, maybe also the Armenian embassy in Indonesia can also do something to to help you to expand the the crowdfunding for your next film. Yeah, I can definitely. Um... Put the link here in the chat group if that's okay yes please 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 do okay. and thank you very much for your support <laughs> thank you for <laughs> having your film <laughs> in our festival actually that's uh, that's really great and uh, while we are waiting for adrina to to type the yes there it is the www.indiegogo.com projects uh, slash project slash revival a film by jivan afetician so guys if you want to support Jivan, just go directly to this uh, website and, <laughs> and please uh, support him. And right now, uh, I think uh, it's time for us to do a photo session, isn't it? I think uh, uh, our host, Panji, can you give us a cue? This is something the Asian would love to do. <laughs> we take photo of everything. So. Not at midnight and, or one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm the host for today. I will count to three and I'll take a photo. Nice. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Paiji. I would like AI. 
Yeah. Uh, Jiva just wanted to just share that it was really important for him that Cassidy and I joined um, today, this evening, this morning, <laughs> this afternoon, uh, <laughs> uh, because uh, especially Cassidy, um, we played a big role in, in, mm -hmm. in creating Gate to Heaven. So he's appreciative of us um, being on his team and is very thankful. Um, to having us be part of it. So, thank you so much for staying up very late, Adrina. Thank and, you. Zivan, <laughs> and thank you, Kestutis, for waking up really early today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and I hope to see you somewhere in the world when the, the when the pandemic yes. is over. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. And thank you so much for the opportunity. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye bye. 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 Thank you. So yes, uh, thank you everyone for joining uh, our film talk uh, today with uh, Jifan Afetisian, the Armenian filmmaker from uh, the director of Gate to Heaven. And thank you for Armenian Embassy to support Europe on screen 2021 and to bring this film to our audience here so that we can see what is Armenian film looks like and to miss Lilith who's attending the film talk today this afternoon so after this we will also have another film talk session with my co-director Noval at 5 p.m and another film talk again with him so please continue uh, following our social media at Europe on screen and Instagram Twitter Facebook and also uh, TikTok and uh, podcast as well and I'll see you guys. And for today's winner is uh, goes to uh, Bambang Junaidi. Congratulations. You won an exclusive gift package from Europe Oscar 2021. Putri signing off. And I wish you a good day. Ciao.